Hey YouTube, it's GV Loan Guy. It's June 27th, 2013, and I'm going to make another video on the subject of the rapture of the church. In my effort to discover the origin of the thought that Revelation verse 4 1 is in reference to the rapture of the church, in researching that, I came across an article that I want to pull some excerpts from and read a few things to you. This is actually from a 1984 Life Study of Second Thessalonians, published by the Living Stream Ministry. The original message was given by Brother Witness Lee, probably in the neighborhood of 1983 or 84. The subject is, a word of correction of the misconception concerning the day of the Lord's coming. And of course that includes the subject of the rapture of the church as well. The three schools of teaching concerning the Lord's coming. There are, among fundamental believers, three main schools concerning the Lord's coming and the rapture of the believers. One of these schools is called the Pre-Tribulation School. This is the teaching that the coming of the Lord Jesus will take place before the Great Tribulation. The word tribulation is a special term in the study of prophecy. It denotes a period of time at the end of the Church Age. At the end of the Church Age, there will be a period of seven years, the last of the 70 weeks prophesied in Daniel 9. Daniel 9 speaks of 70 weeks of years concerning the history of Israel. First we have 7 weeks, then 62 weeks, and finally, after a long interval, the last week, the last 7 years. Just before the beginning of these 7 years, a powerful man will rise up, the Antichrist. Here in 2 Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist is called the man of lawlessness. According to prophecy, this powerful person will restore the Roman Empire and will become the last Caesar of that empire. Then Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, will make a covenant, an agreement with the Jews. This agreement will be intended to last for seven years. Because Antichrist will be so powerful, the Jews will be afraid of him. They will fear that he will persecute them in the practice of their religion. For this reason, the Jews will make an agreement with him, and in that agreement, he will promise them freedom of worship. The Jews will be very pleased with this agreement, happy to have the freedom to worship the God of their fathers. However, after three and a half years, in the middle of the last seven years of the church age, the man of lawlessness will break his agreement with the Jews and begin to persecute them. The last seven years may be divided into two periods, each three and a half years in length. In the Bible, the second period of three and a half years is also called 42 months or 1260 days. The reference is Revelation chapter 11 verses 2 and 3 and Revelation 13 verse 5. Many teach that the Lord's coming will take place before the Great Tribulation. However, when they speak of the Tribulation, they usually mean the entire last seven years. According to their understanding, the whole of the last week of Daniel's 70 weeks will be the period of the Great Tribulation. They teach that Christ will come back to rapture the believers before the this time of tribulation, that is, before the last seven years of this age. For this reason, this, this school of teaching is called the pre-tribulation school. A second school is the school of post-tribulation. This is the teaching that Christ's coming will be after the great tribulation. Those who teach that the coming of Christ will be after the tribulation use many verses from the Bible as a strong basis for their teaching. Those of this school teach that Christ will come back at the very end of the tribulation. Therefore, their teaching is called the post-tribulation school. The third school of teaching, represented by Bible teachers such as Pember, Govet, and Panton, teaches in a more detailed way concerning the Lord's coming back than those in either the pre-tribulation or post-tribulation schools. Those in this third school say that neither the pre-tribulation school nor the post-tribulation school is fully correct. Rather, each of these schools is only partially correct. According to the third school, Christ's parousia, presence, will probably begin a little before the middle of the last seven years, and will last nearly to the end of this period. Christ will leave the throne in the third heaven, and descend to the air concealed in a cloud, and remain there for about three and a half years. During this period of time, the number of things will happen. The man-child in Revelation 12 will be raptured just before the Antichrist begins to persecute every kind of religion, including Judaism and Catholicism. He will exalt himself above every object of worship. 
The man-child will be raptured not to the air, but to the throne of God. Furthermore, according to Revelation 14, the 144,000 will also be raptured during this time as the first fruit, before the second half of the last seven years. We should not make the mistake of regarding the 144,000 in Revelation 14 as identical to the man-child in Revelation 12. These are two different groups of overcomers. The man-child and the 144,000 will be raptured to the throne of God. Then the Lord Jesus will begin his parousia. He will descend from the throne of God to the air. It seems certain that the man-child and the 144,000 will descend with him. At the end of the last seven years, the Lord Jesus will come to the earth. Second Thessalonians 2.8 refers to this. Quote, and the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will slay by the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. End quote. The Greek word rendered coming is parousia, presence. The appearing of the Lord's parousia will be at the end of the last seven years. After Antichrist, the lawless one has been revealed. The Lord's coming and our rapture. Let us now consider 2, 1 through 12, verse by verse. In verse 1, Paul says, Now we ask you, brothers, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. As in verse 8, the Greek word for coming here is parousia. Two matters are covered in this verse, the Lord's parousia, that is presence, and our gathering together, that is the rapture, to him. The Lord's parousia will last for a period of time. It will begin with his coming from the heavens to the air, Revelation 10.1, at the time of the great tribulation, which will occur in the last three and a half years of this age, the second half of the last week of Daniel 9.27, and it will end with its appearing, the appearing of his parousia. During the Lord's parousia, the majority of believers will be raptured to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, the day of the Lord. In 2 Thessalonians 2.2 2 refers, according to the context, to the period of time of the Lord's parousia, that is, his coming, in which the rapture of the majority of the believers will take place. Verse 3 tells us definitely that before this period of time, Antichrist will be revealed to play the greatest role in the Great Tribulation. You can see the Revelation uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and 12 through 15. This reveals clearly and definitely that the Lord's coming, parousia, and the rapture of the majority of the believers cannot take place before the Great Tribulation. Verse 2 says that you be not quickly shaken in mind, nor alarmed, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as by us, as that the day of the Lord is present. Paul did not want the believers at Thessalonica to be shaken in mind or alarmed with respect to the Lord's coming and our rapture. Verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you in any way, because it, that is, the day of the Lord's coming, will not come unless the apostasy comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. This man of lawlessness is the Antichrist, as prophesied in Daniel 7, 20 and 21, 24 through 26, chapter 8, verses 9 through 12. He will be the man of lawlessness, casting down the truth to the ground changing laws, destroying and corrupting many to an extraordinary degree, blaspheming God and deceiving men. Hence the Lord will utterly destroy him, and he will become the son of destruction. Verse 3 indicates strongly that the Lord's coming back will not precede the tribulation. Before the Lord's coming, there will first be the apostasy and also the revealing of the man of lawlessness. This means that prior to the Lord's coming, one matter, the apostasy, and one person, the Antichrist, must appear first. Paul told the Thessalonians that since the apostasy and the revealing of the man of lawlessness must come before the day of the Lord's coming, they should not be shaken by anything or anyone that would claim that the day of the Lord has already come. The apostasy must take place and the Antichrist must be revealed. Antichrist will be fully revealed during the Great Tribulation. This indicates that the Lord's coming back will be after the Tribulation, not before it. Among the brethren, the leading teacher of the school of pre-tribulation was J. N. Darby. Darby was an excellent teacher of the word, and we have learned much from him. However, we do not follow him in his teaching concerning pre-tribulation. The school of post-tribulation is more accurate. Concerning the Lord's coming, 
there is too much guesswork in Darby's teaching. For instance, he says that in Revelation 4, John was raptured, and this rapture was a type of the rapture of the church before the tribulation. According to Darby's concept, the tribulation begins in Revelation 4. Darby claims that in Revelation 4, John was a representative of the church, and that his rapture indicates the rapture of the church before the tribulation. In this matter, Darby infers, or guesses, too much. Benjamin Newton disagreed with Darby's interpretation. He pointed to the second chapter of Second Thessalonians, where Paul says clearly that the Lord's coming will not take place unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness, that is, the Antichrist, is revealed. As we have pointed out, this means that the Lord's coming back will be after the tribulation. Neither those who hold to the pre-tribulation school nor those who follow the post-tribulation school have ever seen the full truth concerning the Lord's parousia. Those who see one aspect of the parousia teach the pre-tribulation coming, but those who see another aspect teach the post-tribulation coming. We consider the parousia as a whole and therefore do not stand with either the pre-tribulation or the post-tribulation school. So, in the middle of the seven years, the Antichrist will break this covenant. He will force the Jews to stop offering the sacrifices, and he will seat himself in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. The Bible does not say much about the first half of the 70th week. However, it has much to say about the second half. The second half is called time, times, and half a time. That is, three and a half years. It is also described as 42 months and 1260 days. The Lord's descent from the throne to the air. While Antichrist is moving on the earth, the Lord Jesus will begin to move from the heavens to the air. We are not clearly told at what time the Lord will begin this move. As a result of careful study, I would say that this will begin very close to the middle of the last seven years. Revelation 12 indicates that the man-child will be raptured to the throne of God. From the book of Revelation, we also know that the last three and a half years will begin after the man-child is raptured. At the time of the rapture of the man-child, the Lord Jesus will still be on the throne in heaven. Furthermore, the 144,000 firstfruits to God and the Lamb in Revelation 14 will also be raptured to the throne of God. These 144,000 firstfruits will not be taken to the air. Rather, they will be taken to the heavens, even to the heavenly Mount Zion. The rapture of the firstfruits to the heavens is typified by the first fruit in Exodus 23:19 being brought into the house of the Lord for God's enjoyment. Quote, the first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. End quote. According to Revelation 14, the harvest, the majority of the believers, will be left on earth to pass through the second half of the last seven years, which will be the period known as the Great Tribulation. Shortly after the man-child and the first fruit are raptured to the throne, probably the Lord Jesus will begin his descent from the throne to the air, concealed in a cloud. Where does 1 Thessalonians 4 fit into this picture? The rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4 must correspond to the reaping of the harvest in Revelation 14. This harvest will be reaped, raptured, probably at the end of the last three and a half years. This means that the harvest will be reaped toward the very end of the Great Tribulation. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, Paul says, Let no one deceive you in any way, because it, the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. After the apostasy and the revealing of the man of lawlessness, there will be the appearing of the Lord's parousia. The revelation of the Antichrist will be completed during the last seven years. This revelation of Antichrist must be first. Then there will be the appearing of the Lord's parousia. In verse 8, Paul says, And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will slay by the breath of his mouth, and bring to nothing by the appearing of his coming. This indicates that the Lord's coming, parousia, will first be hidden and then will appear openly. This also indicates that the Lord's coming involves a period of time. It will remain in secret for a period of time and then will appear to the public. The Lord's parousia will take place secretly during the last three and a half years. Then, when the Lord Jesus slays Antichrist, his parousia will appear. 
Therefore, the Lord's parousia will begin with his coming from the heavens to the air and will be completed when it's public appearing. We all need to be clear regarding the Lord's coming and not be shaken or alarmed by strange teachings concerning it. Today, some teach that Christians will not pass through the tribulation, but will be raptured before the tribulation. This candy-coated teaching is not accurate. Do not listen to such teachings concerning the Lord's coming and our being gathered unto him. The word in 2, 1 through 12 is brief, but it is very sound and clear. I would encourage you to read the life studies on Matthew and Revelation for more details. We should simply not know about the Lord's coming. We need to live a life to match the Lord's requirements so that we may be counted worthy to be in the man-child or to be among the 144,000 or to be the living ones who are raptured according to Matthew 24. Those believers who are watchful and ready will be raptured before the tribulation. However, those who are not watchful and ready will pass through the tribulation.